Hi, this is DarkFox127 and welcome to another Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial video. Today I'm going to be creating a custom container. Uh, before we get started, I'll just mention if the camera looks a bit weird and the, the colour's off, it's because I'm uh, testing a new webcam and just trying to get the settings right. But uh, that doesn't really matter. So, we will continue on. Uh, first thing we want to do is uh, grab ourselves a shelf and put a load of potions on it. Now, a custom container, what I mean by that is rather than just having a normal chest, a container, an urn or something, can just go up, click on it, and all your items be in there. Instead, you could have sort of a, a potion collection on the shelf or a set of scrolls in the corner and be able to go up and click on that set of scrolls and it appear to be sort of a storage location for scrolls of your own or, or potions or whatever you will. Uh, you could even put a, a set of dead bodies and have stuff stored within there, uh, anything you like, or a tree stump or something. So, that'll make a little more sense as we go along. So first thing we're going to want to do, we're going to need a, a nice shelf. Of type in shelf, standard static, good and noble, because these are pretty good. Pick a wall shelf, and drag that over there. Drop that in a bit, put it nice and low so we can access it. Put it up to the wall. Now this one I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a load of potions on the shelf and have it like a, a potions collection essentially. So we're going to want to find a load of potions, so we go into magic and potion, wipe that out. We'll put restore just for some restore health potions. Now you can obviously mix this up, put a number of different sorts of potions around, but uh, you'll see why I'm going to just use one for now just to make things a little quicker. Not one potion, but... When you've uh, put a potion down, if you're going to use anything that isn't static, any non-static items, and have them as sort of a part of your display, then you're going to want to make sure that they act as static items. So they're not going to be able to be moved, because if you go up to your potion collection, you don't want to be able to take all the potions off the shelf and it just be a shelf. And uh, when you start putting potions in, there'll be nothing actually there to make it appear like a potion collection so you're going to go under scripts under each of your non-static items now the best thing to do if you've got more than uh, one of an item that you're using so I'm putting a load of potions on here then you're going to want to add the script to the one and duplicate to save you adding the scripts to every single item which just sucks up a load of time really so you want to add a script if you get any errors just clear them off and you want to type in default B and you'll see default block activation now you want to select that one leave that that's fine no properties to be set to that uh, the other one you want type in the word havoc and you'll end up with three hopefully and the one you want is default havoc on load click OK default block activation uh, stops the player from actually being able to pick up an item at all uh, default disable havoc on load if we go into the properties we need to set two things on here edit the value of the first edit the value of the second but don't actually change uh, don't actually tick the boxes within those two values that's really important that you do that and this default uh, disable havoc on load it basically does a sort of disable havoc dropping but it does it a lot better in terms of uh, you can disable havoc dropping on an item so it doesn't move when the game loads this will do that but in addition it'll actually stop the item from being moved at all so you can fire uh, spells at it, fire, lightning, anything at it, you can use battle cry and it will not budge, it should stay completely still. So that will stop it from coming off the shelf, uh, the player won't be acti able to activate it and it will appear as a static item pretty much. So uh, we, just to be safe we'll click don't have settle as well, click OK. Now we're going to click on that potion and we're going to duplicate that so each of these will have those scripts added to them, that's why I'm duplicating. So. We'll, we'll just spread these randomly across the shelf, put some veered off a bit, all across the shelf. Then you can go ahead and you can, you can change a few of these, so they're not all just uh, red. So if you control F while you select an item, you can quick swap it and this won't affect the scripts, they'll stay on the uh, the item. So we'll grab a slightly larger potion there. And you can replace a few of them, you can put a sort of Magica ones in place. 
so you get the idea I'm not going to go through and do that now uh, when I release the the resource it'll be a lot tidier and it'll look nicer than that but just for now to keep things simple we'll leave it as that so if you click on these items you go into script you'll see that they've all had the the script go with them because you duplicated the original item so that's the best way of doing that really and then just replace each item individually now that doesn't do absolutely anything in terms of uh, being able to do a custom container at all so to do that now we want to click on the shelf because it's the biggest main sort of um, central item and then you want to go into your toolbar at the top here and you want to click on the box with the little C in it. It might be difficult to see on lower resolutions so just tap that box there it's the fifth one along from the, the end on the right and then you should uh, get a little box appear like this, nice little yellow box usually uh, this is called a, a collision barrier, collision container, a plane, uh, call it what you will and if that doesn't show then just make sure you click in your render window, this window anywhere and tap the M button and as you can see it actually shows and hides markers in case you're not uh, aware of that so when that's visible you can start using the gizmos and just drag this out now most people if they are using these uh, it's just to stop things from moving it's to stop the uh, people from activating things behind them but the reason I've still gone ahead and changed each individual non-static item to appear static is because sometimes it doesn't really work and when the game loads for some reason they jump out and they fly outside the container uh, this is really an extra uh, precaution to be sure that they don't go anywhere so I'd still do that and also I mention a lot of people like to keep things tidy and close together like that I don't recommend that I recommend that you leave a little bit of a gap uh, or a fairly large gap between the potions and the end of the barrier and the shelf and it just helps because even though we've set up the, the sort of static properties up things like to still interact with uh, collision barriers and, and cause a mess of things so just make sure there's a, a fair bit of distance between the barrier and the actual items inside because it can cause trouble so there we go that's probably uh, good enough now make sure you've, uh, you've still got your collision barrier clicked and then you want to click on completely the other end of the toolbar uh, the box with the T in it it's on the right the nav mesh tool so click that and you'll get a little box show up first now this is to add activators or triggers in uh, it's basically a trigger and we're going to use an activator trigger so we're going to just go and grab a sort of default trigger to begin with uh, actually we'll put the word chest in type in chest and default activate linked chest there click OK on that so this is uh, what we're going to use to access our chest essentially so we're going to just drag this out, make sure that this isn't hidden behind the collision barrier otherwise the collision barrier will stop you from getting to it. So you want to poke it out slightly. Some people like it to cover all items in the middle there, you don't really need to. This is just what we're going to click on essentially. This is going to bring up the prompt to open up the, the container really, or potions collection in this sense. Now that's a, a nice little area for uh, the player to select to activate the shelf which is fine. Uh, next thing you're going to want is an actual container so just a normal container like you'd use like you put in the world and you want to go under world objects and container uh, wipe out the filter if there's nothing showing and you can alternate click preview find a container that you want doesn't really matter what it looks like uh, because you're not going to see it so we'll take any container we'll duplicate it then we'll edit it Let's click that off change the ID call mine df127 container now the name is actually pretty important here uh, you don't want to leave this as chest uh, you want to put this relevant to whatever your sort of custom chest is so mine's going to be a, a potions collection so I'm going to put potion collection in here and what that does is when you're in the actual menu and you're looking in the inventory uh, rather than it say chest at the top which will look pretty silly it will now actually say whatever's in there so it'll say potion collection and uh, we'll see that when we go in game to test this respawns you want to click respawns off if you're using this as a sort of storage container otherwise you could put items in and they'll disappear later on make sure it's completely empty unless you want to leave some default items in that you can have uh, when you first go up to the container and we'll go ahead and confirm that we'll click no and then yes because we've already duplicated it and we'll just refind our container because it's moved it down the list there it is 
drag and drop that into the render window and then you can start placing now if you've had uh, gizmos left on normal items here uh, that have pulled over from changing the container just tap 2 on the keyboard and that will get rid of that because if you don't and you start messing with it it will start resizing the container rather than moving it and we don't want that so we're going to rotate that round and we're going to drop it into the ground out the way put that into the void somewhere the player can't get access otherwise there would be no point in them coming to this if they can just access that that's the, the whole point of this tutorial so now we need to link those two things together so we're going to double click on our trigger there and as you can see this is still the default activate link chest and the reason we don't want to keep that how it is is because if we go into edit base the name is chest so we're going to want our own trigger so we'll do that in a moment but first uh, as soon as we're under the scripts tab already we'll add a script and we need to type in chest again now you want the activate link chest dummy script and you want to click OK on that there's no properties to be set so the only script you need to add there you want to go along to the link reference tab you want to double click in there select reference in render window double click on the chest no need for a keyword click OK and then before we come off this there is one really important bit to do otherwise none of this will work and that's going to the primitive tab now as you can see player activation is unticked and this means that the player will be able to go up to the box and it will bring up a prompt to open the container so that needs to be ticked and it should change to L non collidable and you can have it as a box or sphere uh, sphere is nicer for s obviously uh, ceramical objects if you, you had it going around like a, a signal stone or something like that, sigil stone but anyway uh, we'll make sure that that's ticked and go ahead and click OK now I'm just going to go back in there for a moment and I'm going to show you a little glitch with the creation kit no surprise there, there's always glitches with this thing if you look under the uh, sort of rotation uh, axis here so if these are on all zeros it doesn't work, I don't know why but it doesn't seem to work uh, you, you've got this on sort of minus 90 uh, it still probably won't work you want to set uh, a 1 on the end of each of these you want this just set a, a little 1 right on the end of each of these so it just offsets the, the activator or trigger just slightly and just enough for it to sort of force it to work so if it doesn't seem to want to work if the prompt isn't showing up it's probably because it's picky about the, the position of it it's a bit of a weird glitch but that's how you sort that click OK on that now you're going to make sure you've got your, your trigger or activator, call it what you will, uh, selected. And actually, no, yeah, we just want to double click back into that. I was going to replace it, uh, can't replace it yet. You want to edit the base this time. And we're going to change the ID. And we're going to put DF Container Activator, because it's pretty much an activator now. And the name is again needing to be Potions Chest. This is what the prompt is going to show. So it's going to say. Um, because of it saying search down here rather than activate with the override text it'll say search chest and this isn't really a chest not to us it's a potions collection so we'll put potion collection and it'll say uh, search potion collection so you could put that to loop we'll change that just to see how that works loop potion collection and that should be pretty much it now click OK uh, before you go ahead and click no uh, click yes don't click no because otherwise you'll overwrite the default trigger and it will cause problems for other mods and the vanilla game so click yes to make a new form make sure you click ok not cancel or anything ok so that it doesn't replace it with the other trigger and uh, that should thinking about it should uh, be it uh, that should be everything uh, really covered there uh, we've linked the chest so we're going to go in game and we're going to test that our new sort of potion collection is working. Okay, so here we are. As you can see, uh, there's our nice potion shelf. And if we go up to it, it says loot potion collection because we changed that activate override to loot and we typed in potion collection. And because we named the chest potion collection, that's also what comes up on the left there rather than it saying chest and looking a bit silly. So... I haven't actually set this chest up to sort of uh, only accept potions but there is scripting for that which I may do a tutorial on later uh, but for now uh, that's absolutely fine it's up to the player what they really want to put in the 
the container anyway. So what I'll do is I shall upload this to my website along with the other resources that will slowly become available. And if you want to find what cell this is in, if you do want to go in the creation kit and take a look at it, uh, it'll be under the cell called DF127 container cell. So I hope that was uh, helpful. Uh, the links will be in the description to find it on the website. I'll actually sort of change this around a little and I'll add some other examples uh, within this little room of custom containers. So please check out my main website and my antisocial websites and the rest of my links and my Steam Workshop uh, for all my latest mods. So thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you next time.